Hello, my friends. Thank you for coming to play with the ideas that come through my mind today. My name is Gretchen Vogel. I've been a psychic medium and author for more than four decades. If you've been following me, you know that our closest neighbor, and I mean close in every sense of the world, word, lost their uh, 27 year old daughter very suddenly on April 4th. And obviously, you know, we've, the community has been in so much support because Bethany was so, was so loving and so loved. She was special needs, but not burdened by some of the things that the rest of us humans are. She was, she was joyful. She had a beautiful singing voice. She was incredibly compassionate for other people's suffering. And yes, she struggled um, physically. She was legally blind. She didn't have the mental capacity for some things, but she had an incredible <laughs> sense of humor <laughs> that a lot of times people wouldn't figure that one out because you wouldn't think that she would have such a great sense of humor. Anyway, we're all deeply, deeply uh, in grief, trying to process this. No one more than her family. What has come to me is that, and this is what I really want to talk about, in grief, are we going to close our heart because our heart hurts? It's so painful and no parent should have to go through what they went through. And there were tremendous advocates. This young woman went so much further and actually could have died kind of any moment of her life from her seizure disorder, but had a, had a very full life. It was so beloved by so many people. Oh my word, her. Her services were, were just huge. I mean, uh, anyway, but I want to talk about uh, this young woman's name is Bethany, which means angel. What Bethany has been up to <laughs> since, <laughs> since she's been in the world of spirit has been incredibly interesting. Miracles. She's been performing miracles for some of us. And I wanna tell you really quickly about mine because the other ones are more interesting. In Bethany's obituary, uh, her family wanted donations directed to a very new therapeutic writing center that's right up around the corner, literally right up around the corner. The one that Bethany had gone to for oh goodness, 10 to 15 years, they had to close. And ever since then, Bethany has not had access to horses, which is what I think she loved at, at least as much as her family, if not more. Now we haven't had horses here in three years, as you know, because my husband and I can't physically do it anymore. And it took me a little while to figure out Bethany's gift to me. In the discussion, meeting this woman, because I've been facilitating a lot of um, every, every, every burden I could take off of this family at this time I have. So I met with the woman who with her family is starting this riding center. I had her over. Because I said, I said, I think we've got somebody to hay our field this year. And if you don't have enough hay storage, if you want to put hay in our barn loft, we've got a really big barn and it's empty. You know, you're welcome to. We still have the hay elevator. You can store it up there. You can get it when you need it. It will be, you know, completely out of the weather. Um, so as your facility expands, this might be a very good um, support system for you, 
for feeding the horses. So the woman came over and she's, she's very nice, very powerful, very powerful creator. I could see that right away. Interestingly enough, she has rheumatoid disease also. Um, so we have that in common. So this woman and some friends have started to ride here on our property, riding around the hayfield, some of the trails that go off of the hayfield, which don't really go very far, but they're kind of fun to explore, uh, coming up and down our driveway, that sort of thing. And at first I had a complete meltdown about this because in my grief over not having horses, not being able to ride, not even being able to go and smell a horse's neck yet, which is, really one of the best things in the world if you ever get to do it is just go smell their neck <laughs> anyway at first I really closed my heart to this and I thought oh man what did I do this is this is gonna hurt so last last Monday I was collecting the cards that came with the donations from the bank or where you know the obit directed and I took the cards over to uh, mom, Michelle, mom, <laughs> Bethany's mom. And we sat and, and she had mommy, actually a lot of us call her mommy because that's what the kids called her. <laughs> we sat and we went through photographs and there were new photographs that I had never seen of Bethany laughing hysterically and you don't see the imperfections when she's laughing that hard and I thought oh how beautiful um so I picked out some photographs that I wanted I am going to make a collage in honor of her to have here then I realized oh my goodness Bethany facilitated getting horses back into my life. And I had the choice of either closing my heart to this or opening my heart to this. Okay, so I gotta tell you about some more miracles that are happening. Bethany's dad um, has never had a job that really nourished in him except for one. And this was through the National Guard. He is the band leader of, I don't know how military things are organized, but you know, they play at parades, they they play it at different things, but the mili there was there's a military academy, and I'm not sure it has to be college level that was looking for a band leader. Now, literally, this was one week after Bethany left, and she left very quickly, very suddenly. Um, one week he's in this interview process for this job that we all knew would be so healing for him at this time because he loves young people he's so great with his kids uh, and he he got the job okay so that was Bethany with her with her magic wand giving her father an incredible gift it keeps going I did not know that this was the school that Bethany's younger brother wanted to go to. And because the dad is now teaching there or will be starting this fall um, and maybe sooner, I really don't know. I, I didn't really drill into all that particular uh, timing of all this. Her little brother's going to be able to go to the school he wanted to go to, tuition free. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're all just kind of waiting to see what else she's up to. So the day that I was, uh, I guess it was, I've been taking the cards over, picking them up at the bank and taking them over to the house and along with other things. But so Michelle was going through the cards and we were crying and, and uh, looking at photographs that I, I hadn't seen and, and actually mommy forgot we're on her phone. 
So as she's looking through these photographs, she's been printing some of them out. And they're, they're amazing. One of the photographs was of Bethany with, with a, um, a very profoundly handicapped young woman that she was in high school with at the same time. And you can tell by, and this was some sort of party for this young woman whose name is Clarissa. And Bethany is leaning over her wheelchair and hugging her and, and they're laughing. And you can just see the affection between the two of them in the photograph. So I kept going back to that photograph and back to that photograph. And then I got this incredible chills ran through my body. And I said, Mummy Michelle, I think this is who greeted Bethany in spirit. And then Mummy Michelle said, for the last month or so, she's been talking to somebody. And she never did that before. You know, like, yeah, I see that. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't that smell nice? Did you, you know, I mean, just random phrases. And Bethany would seem to be looking off into the distance and talking to somebody. And Mommy Michelle said, who are you talking to? And then Bethany would clam up. I mean, she, she, was, she was a fun young woman. <laughs> I could see her holding that one close to the vest. I think that this young woman, Clarissa, was close to Bethany and waiting for her, which gives her mother tremendous comfort because I, of course, it's easy for me to say, I really feel that Bethany's soul made this decision that it was time to go as heartbreaking as it is for the rest of us. Well, heartbreaking, but we need to keep our heart open to love. And isn't that the lesson about everything? No matter how much you're grieving, to try, no matter how much your heart hurts, to try and stay open to love. And that, that's what, there are so many friends sort of surrounding the family trying to help them because this is, this is gonna be tough, really tough. So this got me thinking, we need a different word for death. I've always thought that because it's only from our side that we perceive death as an end. This is clearly not the end of Bethany. I mean, no matter what you believe, and even if you don't believe that you're going to continue, you are, and we'll all cope with it when we get there. Um, so help me think of a word. I mean, even release implies, it's not quite right, toggle in energy, but I looked that up and that was about a switch, <laughs> you know, a switch or a change in energy. I still kind of like toggle as a word. It's short and cute. Um, metamorphosis a really long word, but really closer to the truth. So help me think of a word. Okay, folks, thank you, friends. So I wanted to share a few other, other really little things with you. April has been, oh man, I'll, I'll kind of be happy when April's over. And, and, and now that, uh, you know, Germany is sending tanks to Ukraine, um, we have, we have got to ramp up. I really have been thinking that this has to happen. We can't cave to fear. Um, so I've been doing the, what's called the meta prayer. It, it's a Buddhist prayer that begins with may all beings have happiness in the causes of happiness. May all beings be free of suffering in the causes of suffering. May all beings never be separated from the joy, free from suffering. In the Buddhist tradition, there is a last line, may all beings be uh, 
free of uh, attraction and aversion. But I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure that one really, really applies to trying to extend love energy to the world. So what you do with this prayer, may all beings have happiness in the cause of happiness and, and think about it really locally. And then in your region, perhaps a bigger area, a bigger area, a bigger area, and, and eventually to encompass the whole world with that prayer. That's been soothing to me because so many of us extremely sensitive people were like kind of losing our grip of reality because of this needless suffering. Um, it's hard to hard to hold the faith in in all the suffering, which I, I guess is kind of the theme of this. By the way, Bethany's mom is incredibly grounded in in her spiritual in her spirituality. I mean, I bow to her. I, I've got nothing on her. She's uh, she is so walking in love, so walking in love at this worst time in her life. Okay, so the other thing about April, just to catch up, I'll leave you on a a high note, a really mundane little note, and I have little Miss Pearl on my lap. She got spayed this month, so we had. We had the cone, we had her little surgical suit, we had to keep her away from her incision, we had to get her through. <laughs> She's going to look behind, I don't know whether I can do this. Um, we got her through it, the household is returning to normal. Um, so that's, that was just in, in our little household in the, in the midst of all this other thing that was, that was happening. So say goodbye, Pearl. Tell everybody that we'll be back really soon. I've got another uh, podcast on otters that I want to put up on the channel. I also am recording Choices in the Afterlife in my own voice. We are going to be offering that through the website. I do have a marketing person now in case you, it seems like I've stepped into a more professional look. Um, Kim Granaccia at Huzzah LLC. Kim and I knew each other from before and I was praying to the universe that I really needed technical support because I don't even really care <laughs> about some things which, which probably is not terrific. Uh, I care about animals, I care about friends, I care about love, but um, presenting myself professionally is not something I really care about, so <laughs> she's doing it. So all of that is thanks to Kim. I just wanted to leave you with a, another little screenshot of this adorb baby. Okay, folks, I'll see you again soon. Thanks, thanks for any attention that you honor me with by coming and spending time with me. And if you can think of a better word for death, we really, 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 really need one. Okay, folks, talk to you soon. I, and oh, the other thing is I do have an interactive video plan that I, I really would like to do live. Uh, I got a new computer um, sometime. That will happen. <laughs> okay, take care. See you soon.